Call the meeting to order for Monday, the 17th of October. I'll entertain a motion to accept the agenda as may be amended. So moved. Uh, is there anything you see that needs to move up? The only thing I would um, move up is not official under the manager's report where the event, I have an event permit on here. Mm -hmm. That'll come right after the ice rink proposal because it's the okay. same group. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So we'll just. Um, okay, well, the agenda is amended. Please say aye. Aye. Uh, we do not have any minutes in hand, so entertain the motion for table till the next meeting. No, no worries. Okay. Uh, do we have any select board concerns that's not already on the agenda? No. No, at this time. Okay. Uh, for those who are zoomed in and those of you that are here, are there is there anything that's not on the agenda that you would want to bring up. Uh, if you're zooming in, please unmute yourself or raise a hand or like five chats. somehow let us know. You have five chats. Already? Holy moly. <laughs> no, some I can hear Kurt. Yeah. Oh. They were that was they were going amongst right. themselves. Huh? That's all, just letting you know. No, that's it right there. Thank you. Okay. So the only one open is the town hall. Well, you want to make sure. Well, they come to the top if they do. If they no, if but they, they it, two people weren't there. Down. Two oh, people okay. weren't there when we sang. So just ask them okay. if they want to say anything. About citizens input. Yeah. Is there anything else under citizens input for people that might be zooming into the meeting that's not already on the agenda? Somehow let us know. We're not seeing anything. We're good. Okay. Uh, Lucretia, do you have any liquor control for us tonight? I do. Um, so we have one. It's for the Cascades Lodge. Uh, so Pia did not uh, renew her license last year. She did not operate the lodge uh, with the rest or the restaurant at least. Um, so because she, of that, she had to actually, and because they moved to this new online system, she's had to submit, she couldn't just renew it, she had to submit a whole new uh, application. Mm -hmm. So that's, um, we, they, she's always, other than last year, they've always had a license, first class and oh, third class. Oh, this is all for her, okay. There's no outdoor consumption on this one. Mm -hmm. um, so just, and nothing has, Changed, so and, and the fee has been cut paid. out. <laughs> I got two. I was like, oh man. And he said, wow, it's all for her. Then I, <laughs> I had two copies. Oh. I was like, I make a motion for the town clerk to move forward with CL Hospitality Corporation liquor mm -hmm. permit. Okay. All in favor? You got anything else? Actually, Chris can't say anything, and I'm against. Yeah. I just abstain. Yeah. Well, actually, you can speak to it. Oh, I will. You just can't vote on it. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I'll always speak. Yeah. I've never been shy for words. <laughs> Page okay. two. Pierre has down U.S. citizen question mark. <laughs> <laughs> it says yes. Mine just has a question mark. Oh, mine says yes under it. Well, you got two, there's two separate packages, yeah. two numbers. Oh, this one. First yeah. class and third class? The second page. The first class mark. and the third class. There's two, uh, so two I'm just looking at the first class. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, my motion oh, yeah. was for, for all of them to go forward with the town mm -hmm. clerk. Okay. If there's nothing else, all in favor of having the town clerk move forward with the CL hospitality application, please say aye. Aye. Abstain. Okay. That's all I have for you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> uh, that way they can hear you on the Zoom. Okay. Or if you want to sit up here, I can just turn this. Okay. Um, so I'm here to talk about uh, an idea for an ice rink. We. Um, I'm actually here to ask for some funding, if it's possible. We've, um, you'll see in the presentation that we've um, raised some money. Um, chat, you can change the slide. But 
Before we get there, basically, um, a really interested um, and dedicated volunteer for the rec department reached out and um, wanted, you know, suggested an ice rink. And um, we, starting back in, um, you can change the slide. Oh. Well, either way, even if the slide doesn't change, um, <laughs> he um, reached out and basically we looked for locations. We've got some ideas about an ice rink. Um, it'll be great for the community. We can offer ice hockey, learn to skate lessons. It would be also for adults as well as um, children and families. Yeah, sure. Um, I'm guessing that's not here, but that shows lights. Do we have any lights? Yes. So we actually have floodlights. That was part of our process. We have floodlights that face the basketball court. Rec um, is going to take some of our program or some of our facility budget, and we're going to turn them facing into the um, tennis courts. Mm -hmm. So our basketball court would be too small. It would be fine but if you're an adult and once you pick up speed you'd reach the end mm -hmm. but if we can put it inside the tennis courts and go across the front of the tennis courts because there are poles in the way where we hang the nets but if we go across we can get a 50 by 90 which is um basically that size for three on three adult um ice hockey league and we would just turn the floodlights in and we do have to rec has money in the facility budget to put a timer on it so it would go off at like 8 p.m. So if you can, um, so this is an example of what it looks like. You put the um, rim around and it doesn't damage the ground and then you put a really heavy um, layer mm -hmm. or um, sheeting down and something this size is pricey. It's about um, $8,200. Um, you can flip to the next slide. You can also, this is actually a video, but don't click on it, but you can do your own rink as well. Um, when you're talking about that size of rink, going with something that's pre-made that we can take apart, if we're gonna put money into it, that is made to be taken apart and put back up year after year, it's better to invest um, in something that's made for that versus just doing a DIY. It also saves us, um, since we're using volunteers, it benefits us to have something that's kind of clips together and is, is made for that. But anyway, we could also do a DIY option. Go ahead, Chuck. Oh, no. Uh, we don't need to play. Can we go to the next? Unless you guys really want to see how to DIY. Uh, I've built them, so I don't need to see it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so our process was we, um, we looked at a whole bunch of locations and basically just scored it. But it, if you look at the, the benefit of the... Um, tennis courts is that we can actually, because it's already fenced off when we're doing ice making or if the conditions aren't great, we can actually close it off. So there's not unnecessary damage and that's not possible in any of our other locations and we have lighting. So the timeline, we've already start, started back in August, looked at some locations, um, verified electricity. I briefed the rec commission and they're on board. Um, we had a public meet interest meeting on last Tuesday. Six people came, 18 people have volunteered to help with ice maintenance. So that's basically, you know, two people, you know, people volunteering to be on call twice a month, which is totally doable. Can you go back one screen? Okay, I was just looking to see the differences. Oh. Black with, ground, lighting, with comparisons? Yeah, comparisons. What's a place for wood? So we want to be able to have, a, like, if people are going to be there regularly, to stack wood in a dry place that we can have natural access to. So, like, the golf course, you know, we're not going to stack it down around where the golf carts are because we don't, we wouldn't normally just give people access to that versus if you go... To the so that's a wood for to a the pool. Like yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like a burn barrel. Yeah. That's yeah. A little more <laughs> than a bur burn barrel. Oh, I thought you meant like you could what is really secure storage? The wood if we did a do, do it yourself. Away. Oh, oh no, yeah. we're it's going to go um, going to be stored in the loft of the town garage <laughs> with all the oh, other rec stuff. No, uh, the, no the rink. The, oh, the rink. Oh, <laughs> that's like the other nice thing about that rink is that it's light and trans like a buying one yeah. that's you plastic. You don't want to you don't want to do it yourself. 
Like, no, we know, don't want to do it. People are going to just wreck that edge with mm -hmm. skates and everything. Else. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So anyway, what what comes next is um, um, ordering the rink, um, setting up water, um, and just getting the community set up. The rink um, we would set up at the end of November and then fill it once there's, it looks like there's going to be three cold days in a row. So first or second week of December is estimated. So here are some costs. Um, we are, uh, we, I'm putting in that we're going to um, hire out for plowing because um, we're already short on our staff, on our highway crew. Um, the lighting upgrade, like I said, I'm not, I'm unsure of how much exactly that will cost, but um, we just have to add the timer and flip the lights around, but that comes out of my budget already. Water delivery, um, ice resurfacing and clearing, that's already, Ara is gonna um, spearhead that with volunteers. Uh, we're gonna program um, all kinds of things on that, so Griffin's gonna take care of that. Insurance, that's already covered. Um, and then- How many gallons of water? So it will take, I f I, I'm unsure of how much it takes to fill. It basically will take a fire truck's worth. If, so that's, that we would reach out to our fire department. But for regular resurfacing, it's three to 400 gallons. And so I already reached out to um, Colton's or Pristine Mountain Springs, and they said it's 125 to 150 a time, a, a, a delivery. And part of, actually, I've already had someone um, well, they've, they've already offered to sponsor three trips for resurfacing. And they do that, actually, because we don't have water at the pool house. The pool house is not winterized. Right. Mm -hmm. So we have to find another way. So that's one option. If we need to cut that off, I mean, we no, can, I we can work around it. Water. So th I yeah. didn't realize Colton was called pristine, that's all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now they are, but it's, you Rump know. It out of the beaver dam. <laughs> so Lake. yeah we want to we want to do a few fire pits and some electricity but that we would we would look around for for or like cafe lights we'd, we'd kind of seek donations on that i actually didn't include that 900 dollars in actual in our actual like startup costs because that's nice things to have and then the rink so we've already had um killington resort has already um, dedicated five thousand dollars to this project. Um, we have business sponsor one business sponsor already for four hundred and fifty. We have um, we've started with individual funding. We have a thousand dollars for that. So we've raised six thousand four hundred and fifty dollars. Um, we if based on the program that I've presented, we would spend about eleven thousand nine hundred, and the difference is five hundred and fifty. 500, 5,500. 5, so um, now we can cut, cut a few things off of that, but basically um, that is what it would cost to get a, a nice ice rink that we can run programs on even when it gets dark at five o'clock in the afternoon. Can you go back to your budget? Yes. Where's your firewood? Oh, yeah, we don't have any. Well, I mean, hopefully we get it donated. I will tell you from experience, mm -hmm. you're going to go through a lot of firewood. Okay. It gobbles it up. Do they? You do yeah. not need, you know, you're burning outside, so you don't need. We don't need good wood. Cold yeah. Wood. No, we no, don't. We don't. We could have pine. Yeah, we could have pine or. I got a pile you can have right next to the foundry. Okay. Right. Nice. Exactly. Like. Really, you should have a donation of like drop off log. Down. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> like, have you like cut down something in your backyard and you don't know what to do with it? Like, hmm? bring it down. Um, that's a good one. I, I'll write that down. There. I'm sure there's some things that are missing. For example. We're going to put out um, like bar mats so that people can skate up. And we have um, already have benches. So we'll put our benches out from like the pool. And then they can <coughs> should be able to walk over to the entrance. So one thing I already know that's not on this list is bar mats. But again, we're hoping to like mm -hmm. go out for donation to the community. Like anyone have a couple extra of these that we can just put around? Mm -hmm. Yep. Great. Hey. 
Yeah, and we will we will raise a little bit of money with leagues, tournaments, open skate, but we're not relying on that because we really want this to be open and available to community for certain things like tournaments, etc. Obviously, you you charge a little bit. There's some value there, but it, it's always a low barrier. What's entry. individual micro funding? Just so like literally asking people who want to skate if they would donate to get this project okay. off the ground. Mm -hmm. So if, whether they hand 20 bucks or 500 bucks or whatever. So now three on three hockey, are you charging the teams for it? Yeah, so we've so talked that about. Is in there? No, it's not in there because. Um, you said they're not depending on the buy-in yeah. as part of their budget. Yeah, I'm just. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And another, qu uh, yeah, and this is something I would talk to. With. I would yeah. talk to Chet about is I actually would love to see the money that we raise over the season from Lee's tournaments open skate to actually go ahead and fund things we do next year. Right. So, you know, putting that into some kind of restricted, restricted or restricted. reserve. I always get those two mixed, but Well, depending on how the board decides to <laughs> to get involved, um, that money could go to the rec donation fund, so you mm. can keep that separate. Yeah. In the donation and side, would, from the from like the capital fund where we would typically pay for these things out of. Mm-hmm. Right. So it would roll Does over the, for next um, year. The concession stand at the pool seasonal. Yeah. Does it need to be expanded to do it in the winter. <laughs> you don't. Give me a new building. <laughs> no. So <laughs> to answer your question, you know how when you go in, it's a. No, I'm fine with doing it. I just hunger. want to make sure it's covered. <laughs> No, that, you're not looking to open up the concessions there. No, well, we would do sell drinks and food at Open Skate if we if we wanted to do a p more thinking about a program like if we if we had a big thing and we and we like a, a special Open Skate, not just like people show up whenever they want because we couldn't staff something like that. But if we did a big Saturday event mm -hmm. and we said, okay, we're we're selling s'mores packets and we've got the fires going and s'mores packets are like yep. this amount, you know, something like that. Okay. But no, otherwise, like, the animals would want to be in the... <laughs> we no. <laughs> I think you should probably look at some pretty good... Uh, um, um, I'm going to say I would... I lost my train of thought, sorry. Yeah, and the other one of th we're going to use the, would in this location, since we have the ping pong room as a warming hut, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So even if we decide not to have wood or et cetera, like it's still a space that we can um, have people who priority access to the warming area, possibly where they can have the code to get in. You Except know, there are a pile of people trying to get in. <laughs> <laughs> well, on trying to get oh. on Zoom. I just got texted. Sorry. That's no, that's just okay. Here. You can I close this. I think you still. should think about lighting those three you can nice little this off so we know 90 watt lighting. bulbs that you have there. That I you just, yeah, I couldn't see them before. Yeah, I mean, no, you, we did this off. you might be able to get something LED wise from like. Um, so we have two of those. And then we were thinking cafe lighting around the edge. Okay. But we could, if we're having the electrician in and the conduit's always already the run. There, some LED would be real, a lot easier. Okay. And much more efficient, and there might even be, they're a lot cheaper too, so. Yeah, okay, perfect. We definitely change those out. Yeah, yeah. Can do. So my question is going to be, since our last meeting we were warned that you were leaving us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay, so I'd like to hear, you know, this this is you saying, we, 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 mm -hmm. we is going to France. <laughs> <laughs> the and royal we. <laughs> yeah. Well, so. So I'd like to hear from some of the other people that are pushing for this and, mm -hmm. you know, who's behind it. That's yeah. all. You know, because you are leaving yeah absolutely that's why we had that public interest meeting on the 11th because we had to i had to know that there was actually community interest and that one person very dedicated person wasn't enough so those six people um so ara john rudy um jason evans um ken i forget ken's last name um and another couple 
plus others from the community who I know are de have been dedicated to rec before, like Dan Mullally and, and others, ha they will show up. They understand that I'm leaving. We talked about that. And we would divide up the work. Um, and Griffin would be in charge of the programming. Um, but you're right, it is, it is a lot of work. I do feel like, from my standpoint, making sure that we're set up with that this is financed, that then once those yeah, things are, are, are uh, purchased, that then the volunteer team, like people who are interested in ICE, they know it's a labor of love, and they're willing to be out there. I don't know if that answers your question. I think the, the core team of this is, you know, the same um, that volunteer all the time for all the kids' programs currently. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it is. they're very passionate about it. And, and they're always to. there. Well, I see 18 people on. I'm hoping that at least 10 of them are for the hockey room. <laughs> <laughs> I did not tell them they had to come today. I did let right. them know that I would come today. But if you would like um, emails, I can... No, send, I, email my team of 18 knew, and tell I them knew, to. I knew the one, and <laughs> yeah. I just wanted to hear some of the other names. Mm -hmm. that, that's all. Yeah. That's all I wanted. Um, okay. You know. Um, What's the budget look like for? So can rent? you go back to the to the the, the fee schedule, the cost? Nice. I got all the way out of it. Yeah, there's a lot of really creative um, solutions. So you hire, Colton's will come out and they'll slowly spray the, um, just spray it. Mm -hmm. And then you no, let it sit. Level it out enough. It'll just, yeah, it'll fill in the gaps. Or there are systems where you kind of fill up a tank and like walk it around with some PVC piping and a, literally a bath towel. Yeah. And that'll do it. And then there's some where you actually use like a heated roller, and those are some like really creative DIY <laughs> options where you use like a propane tank and you heat it, and then you don't need water at all because you're using you're heating the water. So TBD on how complicated we get. <laughs> That's why I like the Colton option is best because it'll just come straight down <laughs> before we involve propane. A security warning now. Um, I my computer will not connect. Or isn't connected to the server here, so it won't let me bring it up. But um, how much did you have question? for plowing? Eighteen hundred. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just, you're not going to be using this rink in a heavy down snowstorm. Mm -hmm. We really don't have time for our guys to go across the street, Chuck. Clear the snow. Well, clear the snow. I, I think she was just making the assumption at the end of a storm, being able to plow that parking lot is not out of the question. We just it would just depend on everything else being done yeah and that's the difficult part and, is and that to they be honest need with to you be it makes the most sense to be done with the with the snowblower yeah they they need to be able to um get the snow off asap that um mitigates damage right as it gets stuck to the um ice um and just knowing that the well, i meant the plowing you had plowing for the park yeah lot. but in order to get from the parking yeah. lot to the ice that has to be plowed. Right, but you hire on a you hire on a plow company. They're not going to have the blower to do it, correct? No, we have a snow blower already. Yeah, so the snow blower we're talking about is the one that's on the front of the snowcat. No, well, unfortunately, the sn snowcat doesn't fit into the gate, so that's like a one of those trade-offs. Not the snowcat, the the, bob, the, yeah. the bobcat, yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> the snowcat, the, the, the um, tool cat really doesn't um, fit into the um, into the tennis that. court, so mm -hmm. the so ability to just make it to fit. Well, well it's a chain link fence. It's yeah, not yeah. That <laughs> and that chain link fence is <laughs> no cutting it open and putting an opening in is a big project and a chain link fence. And you don't want that on it. We, if you wanted the snow plow through, we have yeah. a smaller like you just get a small. Well, exactly. We just have behind. we just have a, um, a, a walk yeah. behind snow blower, but I like that was yeah, what we I mean, talked just about go with when the we smaller snow blower and thought about it in a different yeah. location. That's how we we you yeah. know, a small snow blower would do it. That's what we use. Can you get out of there? It, for some, I cannot. It went. He's frozen on. Not having any luck. 
I think you got to go to your second screen, which is the big TV, and close out those dialog boxes. What the hell is going on? I got to. I think I need to stop sharing right now, very quickly. Hey, didn't you want to keep the one up and then start trying to hit the OK? What you had? Okay, X out of either one of them. Stuck. <laughs> I haven't had that happen before. You're in the wrong screen somehow that you have to get back to. Now try. I went to read on me. <clears throat> Check that out. No, you're out of that. Chad, do you know if the screen is like if you exit the right side or the left side to get to the main TV? Because right now it's set up as two separate screens. I'm not even getting that on my so Your mouse doesn't, if you move to either side, it doesn't go up to the. No, I can't even get to that. Right. So, Roger Rivera, can you hear us? Kurt from the Mountain Times, can you yes, hear us? Yes, I can, I can hear you guys. Okay. okay. I still have audio. Okay. We're having a technical issue with the computer. Well, that might be on our end. <laughs> oh, it's totally on our end. <laughs> yes. There's no question it's on our Operator end. error. Yes, it is. And all I tried to do is reopen it, and it just killed me. What about uh, control, delete, and just bring up your um, task manager? Close out the PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. Let me out of any of this. Can't even X out of there. Hit enter now. Do it again. Look at that guy. Yeah. <laughs> Woo -woo. How can we go to the <laughs> best seat in the house controller? Look at that. <laughs> All right. Well, it's just, we know it's $1,800 or whatever. So, I mean, I, I'm just getting at that, you know, I mean, I just can't see why if it's a snowstorm that someone can't at least <coughs> make one swipe to get there. So then the small snow blower can go. That's S it. One swipe where? Through the parking lot. I, I guess That's what we're totally talking about is, is one swipe through, so on a snowy day or whatever, they can get down to the. Mm -hmm. But wouldn't you leave the. You, you have a shed over at the library now. Yeah, we could leave the snow blower in the um, pool house. Uh, by say, where just leave it in the pool house. Leave it in the pool house, and if you have a snow, it's walk it out. Down, but yeah, then the but then where, where are they going to park? No, that's what, so. Not, there's two not there's, plow. There's two, different, there's two different things here. Yeah. There's $1,800. That's for parking lot. To, that's for the parking lot. Yeah. And I'm just saying that the town guy should plow the parking lot. Yeah. That's all. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'm saying. I mean, when, we, when, when, when the. That would be something that we could uh, get Rosie to do when he comes down off of the mountain with the with the blower and just blow through there. Yeah, I mean with a big blower. Right. It wouldn't take long, it, even if we had a great snowy winter, which we hope, like roll back the embankments for an hour with a loader is easy. Yeah, to I mean it. Mm -hmm. It just it's just another parking lot we haven't done in the past, and we're just you know we can mm -hmm. make it work. It's just it won't be it won't be a priority item. Obviously. Right. Yeah, but that's what I got back in the beginning. If we're getting a foot of snow, you're not ice skating while you're getting a foot of snow right. because it's mm -hmm. going to be nasty out. It's terrible. Mm -hmm. You know, you're just not going to do it. So, so just just take the eighteen hundred dollars off of the fifty five hundred needed. Okay. Is what I'm saying. Sure. Okay. <laughs> so fifty five hundred, thirty five hundred. So you're down to thirty seven hundred needed. Mm -hmm. So you're asking the board for thirty-seven hundred dollars, mm -hmm. call it four grand, plus the town plows it. That's what we're asking for. Yep. So the next question is, is 
you can find this in the budget. Well, I would I would recommend, given that we're buying an $8,000 rink that we won't have to buy next year, that's a capital item, technically. Right. We, mm -hmm. we, we buy things like tennis nets and things like that through that. So that's where I would say that would come from. Right. Okay. okay. So I'll just make a motion for the town manager to move forward with the ice hockey rink proposal mm -hmm. with the town taking care of the parking lot and uh, plowing. And we'll put a number on it. And, and, and that um, we put $4,000 towards the budget that they provided to us. Thank you so much. Well, it's a motion. <laughs> okay, well, let's wait. Let's see who declines. <laughs> who votes against it? <laughs> She's reading the room. <laughs> yeah, I'd say, I'd say that as well. I think it's yeah, great for the community. I mean, we're all asking questions to make it better. I don't think anybody has said anything against it. Now. Uh, are you guys okay? Conditional that Sarah no. stays for another year. <laughs> <laughs> we can't do that. We could. Yeah. <laughs> Call of us. Okay. Mm -hmm. All in favor of Jim's motion to have the town manager move forward with the proposed ice rink, please say aye. 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 So I, I, you already have, can we go to the people that are here? Get off of this ice rink picture. Escape. Well, the picture's already. Right. I took it down. <laughs> so. You can't get anywhere now. Oh, I can go anywhere now. <laughs> yeah, let's see you. What do you want to do? I want to get to where the people that are in the main screen. Oh, you want to see that back up? We're back. done with the Close rank. It back to the main screen. I mean, that's all the people that are in there. We're not we don't it. see it. I, what do you, you want to see every person? Up no, there. I want to see the zoom. I don't want to. We're done with the ring. Just know who's. Just know uh, who's zoomed in. I'm looking. I'm seeing it all here, and I'm like, okay, yeah, well, it's not coming up. Escape. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah. I mean, so yeah. Amy, it's you're here right from there. the resort, I think. While we're trying to figure this zoom Computer thing out. out. I thought I saw Amy. No. No? I I this is Amy. strange. It's up on his computer, but it's not coming up there. So just disconnected screen. I'm going to stop the share. I'm just going to start over. Close PowerPoint. I think you're still in the PowerPoint. No, that's the. I didn't set up a second screen. So my question was, you have, we have to go out and order an eighty-nine hundred dollar rink right away, correct? Yeah. And the funds that you had to being donated, how fast are they available? Um, Amy Laramie said that um, I would I would write them a donation letter, which I've already drafted, and then I'll send it to them. Um, but if this is the question, I guess the question was we, if this is a capital expense, then we would order it since we're tax deductible anyway, and then we would somehow reimburse with. Well, it's, a, in, it's in the restricted fund, so therefore the reimbursement. Well, the same way we do with like yeah, trail I'm just funding. Saying the, 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 the rink is like nine grand. It was 8200 Eighty-two. Or something. Okay. Was the list pr the mm -hmm. price you gave up? No, we would just order that. Order it, and then as the funds come, come in, in, they'll go back into that fund to reimburse. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. and we. So. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay. Good. All right. So. Uh, this is terrible. Okay. So, so uh, you, because you need to order the rank right away yeah. if you want to get yeah. it. So, yeah, yeah. Okay. tomorrow. Yeah, okay. so go down tomorrow and order the rank. Okay. And get it from there. Um, you, did did that, it, does the rink come with the plastic and everything for underneath? That the price, yeah. It's the, like, it's a special bracket so that they don't damage, you right. know, because there's some that can be drilled down or if you're doing grass or whatever. So, those. Right. Okay. Has right. everything. All right. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And are you the event <coughs> permit? Yes, he I'm here um, okay. representing Killington Mountain Bike Club. Next weekend we have the Haunted Hillside Relay Race, which we did last year. Okay. And um, it's just for at base camp, um, and it goes around behind base camp, and there's a few vendors um, and some games. 
And so, um, however, I've had, um, I have their certificate of insurance um, mm -hmm. as required by the event permit, but I have not um, yet gotten all signatures. Um, I still need to connect with um, police, highway, and fire. So they're holding an event on their property that can sit X amount of people anyway. And now why do you need so a permit? So how many people are going to be there? Um, I, this they're year, I think it's going to be like, road. they're not going to be parking on the road. It's like, it's route four. <laughs> yeah, well, they have plenty of parking and if needed overflow at the Welcome Center, but that's not necessary right. um, and the thing is people come in they have a, a long period of time to come and race so people trickle in and out yeah but they have like school races yeah the buses pulled in and well so this event thing this is what's getting me there's certain reasons why there should be mm -hmm. a special event and then there are certain reasons why there shouldn't be a special event for them. so there's no added police mm -mm. there's no Bonfire. No, the we're not fire lighting anything. Fire. anything. No fire. fires for this. No, no fires for this. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's no. It's there, there maybe a hundred cars parked yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, at most. And they've had a hundred cars there on a regular. Mm hmm. So. Does the event permit cover outside consumption? But this is that it's their business property and they're running something. They have an outside consumption permit. They actually can. They don't even have an outside consumption permit. They have a they have a, a permit to sell, to sell and sell. drink. And I don't know how, but they can drink on their property. I guess just like the golf course. You can't. Mm -hmm. you, you can't drink on the property if you're selling to go. Right. You can't consume it on the property. Right. That's why I'm asking, does this permit cover that? I'm not getting What I'm saying is, is that we don't have a liquor thing in front of us. No, no, they're not. We're not doing that. Last year we did apply for like a catering permit. Well, not us, but our. But we're not working with the vendor in that way. Yeah. Okay. okay. I just don't know why we have a special permit in front of us. That's all. For somebody that's going to do a bicycle race on their bicycle trails, mm -hmm. and it's just going to be for a Halloween. It's, mm -hmm. And I've been there when they... I just don't think it needs a permit. Yeah, I don't either. I'm not sure okay. that they do He's either. He's business. So tell yeah. him that we revoke <laughs> his uh, <laughs> license. We refuse <laughs> to sign. We refuse. We refuse. I think last we year we filled to, one out and it was re signed, so we, we didn't We again. refuse to <laughs> issue <laughs> him a... Special <laughs> event permit. Mm -hmm. No, we're allowed to do it anyway. Do it underneath okay. their own licenses, so it doesn't. If anything goes wrong, it doesn't come back to me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> awesome! I feel good about that. <laughs> All right. Okay. Thank okay, you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Sarah. Thanks. Thank you. Um, Zoning amendments for sections 120, 407, and 640. Mm -hmm. So this is the second part of the permit, I mean the amendments that were provided um, by the Planning Commission. All the original copies are here. Mm -hmm. um, and this related just to sections 120 definitions, 407 mm -hmm. short-term rentals, and 640 certificate of occupancy. Mm -hmm. um, based on the, the discussion related to short-term rentals, there was no changes coming specifically to the short-term rental other than we are intending to move to an ordinance and this is just putting language in there that allows us to replace Section 407 with an ordinance in the future. Mm -hmm. So for those of the people that aren't here, Section 120, what definitions are being, what page is on here is for definitions? Mm -hmm. <laughs> what's being changed? For there's been change there's been multiple changes done in these ones, so I'm not hundred percent sure which ones are part of Is this there anybody here from the Planning remote. Commission that can do this for us? Um, don't well No. No. I don't recognize any Lisa's from away planning this week. Commission. And this so if I go to page 10, I guess this is one of them, travel trailer, a mobile vehicle, or a camper van. So 
So I guess we kind of. Those are different sections. Just clarification definitions is my understanding. And then zoning map, they've changed certain things there. Locations and boundaries of zoning districts are established according to the zoning map. And there's a bunch of stuff crossed out and they need. So didn't we do this already this one time here, this, this definitions or were there more definitions? There were more, were there's been definitions in each group that related to each grouping. But I think ultimately it's it's the culmination of all of them. Mm -hmm. So this is just a working document. Yes. Now this is something we're going to be passing, and we're supposed to pass. Yes or mm -hmm. no? Because then what you can do is then you look then you have to look at all the changes that were made as part of each one of these groupings. Is this is the third yeah. set, mm -hmm. and then apply and then you're approving the entire package. But these are all acting ordinances. Um, are we allowed to table this until we have yeah. somebody from the yep. from well, the we zone? got we have some people here for short-term rental I'm sure um, can we at least go to the short-term rental section and tell me where that is what page parking and dimensions. See them, they didn't put this set on their website. What's that? I don't see it on the, the site on their section, so I can grab it. The revise the revisions. Can I see this one? Over? Can you put that one over? There? This one? Yeah, that's this just lighting and signage. You see this one. So this is parking and dimension. Right, and that's lighting, lighting and signage. signage. What's this one? Public hearing copy. Yep. Mm -hmm. Short term rental section 407, page 52. Let's see if it's in this, even though it's labeled differently. Short-term no changes rentals. made on this at all. What page are you on, Jim? Uh, page 52. Okay. Let's see if it's in this one. That's what this says, but it's not there. So, right, if I go to table of contents. There is no 402 in here. It jumps from section 401. 407. Oh, 402 prohibited uses. 404, 406. Just, that well, 402, 407 short-term rental. Pitch short term rental of dwelling unit. Section. Page 53. Yeah, right here. Short term rental of dwelling unit. Page 53. 407. Section 407. Yeah. My eyes are going. It doesn't look like anything's changed. It doesn't show me what, <laughs> what the changes are. I mean, it's just. How about I mean, the issue is, is that just... I'm not seeing changes to what we had. No, that's where I'm at. So we're supposed to have something up 
This one just says parking, so there's nothing done here. There's another one that's just for short-term rentals, because short-term rentals was done after parking in dimensionals, and it was done, this one's dated July 25th. Short-term rentals was just at the Planning Commission. Um, in September. In September. So we don't have anything in front of us here. That one says. This was just. This we, is we, we the most current the year is 2020. 2020. No, no, no. What does it say in here? Lighting and signage. Oh, lighting up here. So you have lighting, lighting and, signage and signage, and you brought parking and dimensional, but there is no short-term rentals. And, and there's nothing on the website that I can find, and I was not sent anything. It was it, the warning came out the day after the planning commission meeting, and then the documents were not updated to me, and I thought everybody had them. So I'm just going to give a quick, let's go back to the people that are on here and how many people are here for short-term rentals. So, I mean, I see Holly's on here. I don't know who else is in Dan, and I don't know who else is involved in the short-term rental, but since we don't have what's supposed to be in front of us, you know, we're going to have to table this to the... Mm -hmm. to the next meeting which is whatever. next Monday next Monday and if we can get the short-term rental document to us but for those that are sitting here currently I know some of the conversations that have been had was a confusion about losing the plus two or whatever that is not in here that's not being changed the only thing that's supposed to be in the short-term rental change is saying that this document is staying the same until there is an ordinance that is in place by this board mm -hmm. and if not contested by the voters mm -hmm. to go to a vote. So mm -hmm. when it's finally accepted by all, that's the ordinance is going to be where the changes are. Right. And in the ordinance it's going to be more of the fining and and the enforcement it's not going to change anything as far as two per bedroom right. plus two plus two okay and the it's, registration it, portion it's the of registration it. part yeah. and everything yeah. i think it's going to go into because per the division of fire safety saying that all units will have to be inspected it's not this eight and over mm -hmm. okay and that it will be more that this board will be the judicial bureau that when the zoning administrator or the short-term rental person administrator writes a ticket for mm -hmm. over mm -hmm. advertising okay that it will be held here the ticket will be right away it will not be a warning and it was you you you, you you the, wrote the, what you the signed ordinance, on for. Yeah, the ordinance also has to include the procedure. And the procedure. And, we'll, and we'll have the procedure and yep. everything. So, mm -hmm. I mean, the ordinance is also, or, or, you know, you're only getting two people. The, the actual zoning thing says two, two extra people per dwelling. Right. Not a duplex. You don't get four because a duplex is considered one dwelling because you're only allowed to have one dwelling really on your property mm -hmm. okay i know there's one that a friend of mine used to own that it was permitted that has two lots on there but still we're saying that it's two per bedroom plus two for your septic system that's right. what it is mm -hmm. some people were taking it as two per bedroom plus two on each side and that's not what the intent of the rule was. It was two per bedroom plus two because that's what we can do over the septic law. But they didn't send it to us to accept it to begin with. Right. So Jim, I got a question on that. Yep. Is it two per bedroom per dwelling? Or the two so if you have that duplex, could you like my house for example, which we don't do short term renters, but it, it's a perfect example of what you're saying. On one side, that's a rental house. There's four bedrooms, so that would be, you know, the eight four, plus two is eight plus ten. Two. Ten. Ten. Would that? But then on the other side, there's three bedrooms. So, so you I'm have seven there. bedrooms total. Yeah. So it's fourteen plus two is sixteen. But would the whole house get inspected, or just the rented outside? 
just the uh, just just the part. So we actually have people this year because it's set up in the system that are coming in and they're registering A and B. Right. Okay. Or some are staying in A and they're only coming in for B. And then, so in that case, if I say I'm living in A, renting out B, could I say that B can house 14 then? No. Because no. you but only have four bedrooms over there. Well, I thought we were counting the dwelling. No. If you want to no, put a lot of people in No, if you're a duplex, you are two separate units. One is four yeah. bedrooms and one is three bedrooms. Okay, so the bedroom is by unit, even though you're saying the house is the dwelling. Right. You can't say okay. you have a seven. You, you want to rent it to 14 people on the four bedroom, then nobody's living in the three bedroom one. That's an automatic. Right. Yeah. You know, you're getting two per people per bedroom. If you have a duplex, your duplex doesn't say, your duplex says this is a four bedroom and this is a three bedroom. So it's you're getting, getting eight, two for you're getting time. eight plus six, and you have to decide if you're renting both units. Are you putting the two to this one, or are you putting one to this one, one to this one? Okay, so that's, that's the plus two goes to the, the septic system. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah. You know, that's it. Yeah, um, What's your chat, chat? Yes, it will, Jonathan. In we have, so the, so the ordinance. In elegantly. I don't know what that means. Uh -huh. No, the, any, the ordinance will have to, to be say. posted. There will be a public hearing with the select board, and and then there will be a decision as to whether to adopt it or not. Right now, the current regulations stay in effect until such time that that were to go into place. Mm -hmm. Correct. Changes need to be posted so they can right. all see them. So yeah, all zoning on changes will be warned like 30 <coughs> days in advance, and it'll be sent out on mm -hmm. via CHIMP and everything else. Okay. There is no ordinance right now in place. Right. What we were waiting for is for this zoning change right. from the Planning Commission to take place. Because mm -hmm. that would be putting the cart before the horse of getting an ordinance when you don't have the zoning change. Mm -hmm. The zoning has to say that this zoning will go away mm -hmm. into an ordinance when it's passed. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're doing. Okay. There's another chat. I don't know if it's still the same. No. It's not going to happen by the next Monday meeting. No. I mean, there, folks, the ordinance is probably going to happen. And I kind of picture this done. is that we're already into this year with the zoning regulations. The, the, the year starts November 1. Yeah. So here we are. We're not going to have this ordinance, this zoning change until... Probably next month. We're not going to have it next week. Right. right, and then you, and then we have to go through the process of completing the ordinance, having the hearing, making mm -hmm. any adjustments, and through, adopting. We it. have to get through this, this. Right. Yeah. right, and then we got to wait thirty days for somebody not to challenge this. Right, I know. So I don't think we're going to have any ordinance in place that can actually. I don't think it's fair to the short-term rental people. Of having them registering under one set of rules that and they're doing right and now, then change it and, and then back. changing it in the middle, and that that's not fair. No. no. So if we adopt it, it'll be for the next year. Cycle. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that should so it, it won't be for the Monday meeting. The Monday meeting is just hopefully they're going to send us this. You're not going to get that for right current. Now. I mean, I'm, I'm even. I'm I mean, just saying. if you're telling me that the zoning regulations for um, short-term rental has not been posted at town hall mm -hmm. this is what I took off of the desk yeah. in there no, if it's not posted okay. on the town hall they have to be posted for X amount right. I mean, I'm surprised we don't have like um, 560 short-term rental <laughs> people on, on on this zoom call saying there's nothing on the there's nothing on the website either. I could I couldn't find it, so I'll have to I yeah. 
but we have some gaps right now yeah. so the reality is is we may have to rewarn this meeting for 30 days and then start that process again so we'll we got to find out where the red lines are so those of you that are here for this short-term rental thing do you have any questions or am i making myself clear that the Planning Commission didn't get us the actual document in front of us for short-term rental zoning. Um, I can't do anything in an ordinance with the town attorney as the um, zoning administrator um, or short-term rental person. And I don't think it's fair that we change the rules since now you're signing up. And, and, and I don't really, the only rules would be is the violations of a, an ordinance but um, I don't know if anybody has any questions. Yep. I'm kind of. And this piece of paper doesn't speak to any changes. It just says a clarification. This was the public hearing warning I was given the day yeah. after. No, I'm just the, saying it says to clarify commission. the requirements. The requirements aren't changing. Right. And uh, the modification of relevant terminology within the glossary. It's not changing any of the requirements or any of the things that they would be most interested in yeah. this was taken from the planning commission and then it yep. uh, made into a select board mm -hmm. there's another areas. chat in there mm -hmm. that's the same one uh, thank you that's why uh, i was here to say it would be unfair to change midstream yep mm -hmm. at least okay. somebody thinks like me they but <laughs> <laughs> i just there, okay. there has to be changes otherwise this meeting wouldn't be want so then uh, right. we need to table these amendments until we get the paperwork in front of us. I'm looking at the wrong document, so. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so the uh, zoning amendments will be tabled until such time that we have the correct documents in front of us to act upon. Well, I would just refuse. I mean, you're going to have to... You, I'm going to just say that the that we do not have the proper warning in front of us. Right. I don't know if the proper anything. So this is rescinded tonight's meeting, and let them go through the process of warning yeah. it again. Well, that's why right we're, way, we're not just postponing. We're tabling yeah, until we get the stuff. Even no, yet. because you can't table because yeah, the table. because the document wasn't posted. Oh, it wasn't the, posted. The hearing, okay. The right. hearing, so that way, the, this the hearing, hearing could not take place. Tonight. Hearing couldn't hearing, take place because it wasn't this posted. Hearing for section okay. 120, 407, and 640 yep. is 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 turned back to the planning commission yep. to do it correctly. Okay. Okay. Um, you have golf financials listed first. Yeah, got well. Yeah, David was unavailable due to appointments to come to tonight's meeting. Mm -hmm. um, right now. Uh, this is just the uh, golf from July 1 through the end of September. Um, Revenue-wise, um, they're about $50,000 ahead of last year. Um, mm -hmm. And the budget is for about 140000 So we're basically on budget when you look at the 12-month mm -hmm. um, process. And we'll see how, uh, how October looks because they are closed. They're closed now. Today, right? Yeah. Or the uh, other day. Yesterday. Sunday was their yesterday. last open day. Yeah. Today was nine holes for all the employees. Right. But it was not open to the public today. And, and they uh, just to pass this on, the they I told David I would bring this up. They would prefer people don't show up with their dogs during October because they're putting the course to sleep, meaning the aerators are coming in now. Um, they're doing stuff on all the fairways and cutting down a lot of the tall weeds and they just don't want people with their with their dogs and stuff in there right now can we post a sign out that says dog is not allowed until November uh, we could December 1 well he said they'll be ready by November he's only figuring on the next couple of weeks Um, and on the expense side, they're running pretty much on budget the same way. Mm -hmm. um, we're within $2,000 difference from last year's net at the same time. Mm -hmm. From a cash perspective, at the end of September, Golf had $681,000 in the pro shop and $70,000 in the restaurant, of which $150,000 is restricted funds. 
Um, so when you take that out, we're at 530, we're basically at $600,000 uh, cash at the end of the season and the town did not take out any loans uh, to fund operations this year. You know, some of that cash additional flow is related to expenses not incurred because a couple <coughs> pieces of equipment haven't come in yet, but overall still performing pretty well. Okay, I have a question here. Uh, under, under the treasurer's report at the bottom, Sherbin Golf Service Company, it says transfer from Pro Shop is zero, but then below it, it says transfer back to Pro Shop is $50,000. If they didn't borrow any money, why are they giving money back? Typically, what has I'm happened just not familiar in, in with past their, years. Mark probably knows the answer. <laughs> in, go ahead. If, if cash, as the uh, restaurant has much less bills to pay, mm -hmm. uh, for example, payroll is paid out, all payroll is paid out of the pro shop. Mm -hmm. So a restaurant will accumulate cash. When we made uh, some bond payments a couple uh, months ago, mm -hmm. um, I asked Lucretia to transfer some money over, so they, okay. they did. They did transfer fifty grand. They had excess cash on hand, okay. and I wanted to use it for the bond payments. That so, the question. But, but I guess what Steve is asking here is underneath Sherburn Golf Company, it's saying that the transfer from the pro shop is zero. So from the pro shop to the yeah, I know. From the pro shop to the restaurant. To the restaurant would make, okay, so the pro shop to the restaurant would be zero. See up above it says and transfer from so restaurant. That, so yeah, okay. okay, so just it, it really should be like transfer from restaurant restaurant to pro shop. It doesn't say, well, whatever. Yeah, it kind of does. It, it, do, it does on top. It yeah, does and on then top. Up here pro, shop, the pro shop transfer from restaurant. It does. Right. Yeah, okay. In the in the Sherbin Golf Service, which is your. I restaurant. have a question on okay. menswear. So on on merchandise on page one, <coughs> we've got shoes, menswear, yeah. ladies' wear, all this other stuff. We budgeted our actual for this year period three is forty one one. And last year was forty three nine, so twenty eight hundred dollars less. Then I go to the last page, and it's on our expenses. And for a total pro shop, whatever, it's it's not making. Okay, I'm already answering my question here because underneath this here it has card credit fees in it, so it's not apples to apples. Because I was going to say, well, even still, it says actual in 2022 or whatever was 107,000 for Pro Shop, the top line, and now we're 138,000. So we're $31,000 over last year, but yet we did $2,000 less. And then I looked, there's credit card fees of 12 grand. So that puts me down to about 24,000 and there's bank charges of 267. But everything else, headwear and miscellaneous and everything else, I mean, we spent like $20,000 more and we did $2,000 less. I, I guess I'd have to look at it, Jim. I, I don't have it. I'm looking at a much different golf. I, I can't get into the negotiation there. So on page one, these are your expenses. Okay. No, go to page one in merchandise: shoes, menswear, ladywear, mm -hmm. pro balls, yes. gloves, golf clubs, miscellaneous headwear. Headwear. In 2022, our actual was 43.9, and in 23, we're at 41.185. Okay, a couple and thousand bucks less. Right now, I go now I go to page the last page underneath expenses. And I've got men's wear, ladies' wear, pro balls, gloves, golf course, I mean clubs, miscellaneous merchandise, headwear. Then I have credit cards and bank charges in this category on expenses for let, let's call it twenty thousand, okay? So twenty thousand off the one thirty eight is one eighteen, but the year before I spent one oh seven. Even see they have it all lopped here cost so, of goods so here. 138 you're looking I mean, at which is year to date 
total pro shop. That's not merchandise. It's, it's not subtotaling for you for merchandise. It's, it's all, it's all, all this expensive. stuff here, too, all the expenses. It's called course management. It's Okay, I thought the last time we asked for having the different things broken out that I, I, I asked for. Because, I mean, here I got... Yeah, I said I would like to see like okay so per for merchandise so we had a budget here of cost of goods but what happened is they broke it out after that and so that it comes into each one of them but there's no subcategory so you don't know that that is equal to what the cost of goods here because there's no total the cost of goods is 54 but that was for 2022 but there's nothing for okay so they broke them out individually. After 23 forward. 23, it's, I this is here. all here. Yeah. I wasn't here then. No, they I just put no, on yeah, yeah, 54K. I mean, but, but, but this is where I got, like, the last time. It's like, so one year, so if I go to the second to the last page, one year I got, in 22, pro shop expense, 13250 Then go down to uniforms I had nothing budgeted then all of a sudden there's budgeted 2023 you know it's just like there's so many different lines that aren't understood because the format has changed if you for example and this is not on you this is on no them. it's just an explanation of what you're of what you're looking at the admin expense FY 22 budget 110,000 so they took a slew of expenses rolled them all into one number and slapped it in there but in the FY 23 budget I took it all and busted it out into individual categories based on the pro, on the pro shop history so I took that big number going forward in the next budget year and if you added them all up you, you <laughs> there's no subtotals for you Jim unfortunately so you'd have, I, I don't even have a calculator with me. All right, give you an atom up. But. I'm just doing it right now. I already did it. So it totals up the budget on the wearables is 53000 that they budgeted to do. The actual. All I'm getting at is, is that when we hired on this company, which I pushed for, they were going to give us individual line items, and they're still not, they're not doing it, you're doing it. Totally. And, they, and, they and that's what I'm did. getting at, is this, they, you remember when they came to us and they said, I can tell you what you're spending for <coughs> pro balls and what we're selling them for. I can tell you what we're going to do for gloves. And they're not doing it. The I'm just getting tired of it. I mean, it's like I, you can't, you don't, you don't know what it is, Mark. Or I don't know what it is because they're not giving the correct budget. And here we are coming into another budget time. And it's like we're right back to Mark is doing everything. And you can, you have to go all the way back because you can say, okay, balls, we we get, did. Uh, 15942 yeah, but our balls cost us right on the last page on the last page here our balls cost us 11146 right so you have to keep going back and forth with it to peel it apart it would be nice to have it sub totaled for us so you can see what the cost of goods are in the clubhouse okay or the pro shop and then you can see what it is in terms of the revenue coming in then you can figure if you're making money or not Mark, are you, can you see that in their system when you're in there? Uh, I can give you a summarization right now. Year to date, 9, 30, September 30th. Pro Shop merchandise sold. On a year to date budget of 51,000, we, we sold 41,000. We're down 10,000 in cost, of, in sales. Mm -hmm. Cost of goods, total, we were budgeted 35.7. Our actual is 25.865, so we're down 9,800. Okay. It's the same so 10,000. Yeah. I guess what I'm more about is is that you know you're the budget line here 
is this you doing all these things breaking out or is this them now? Because in the previous year... Oh, it's definitely me. They, yeah, they, and, and that's all I'm getting. They, they, this is my they major have a concern totally right here. See this? Format, this was 22. And then, they would put, and, and then they would put in restaurant 11,000, but then they didn't do anything. And now, well, then now all of a sudden Mark is coming in on this one here and breaking out. And it's just like there's too many blanks. But what they did is would, they took restaurant down here. No, no, this is Mark over here in this Oh, year. I know it is, but if you put, they plugged in 11.6 on the restaurant, okay, for income. Then what they did is that when they got down here, they put in the ex actual expense. Oh, the, no, no, they had a full expense on the restaurant here. Then they broke out the expenses here this year. They never broke them out here. That's why you're seeing it over here. And these, never are, did these are our books, and what they're doing is, is when they when they have the expenses, they're coding the the expenses, and we're putting them in our system. Next we're not seeing be their system. I don't know. They don't have their system. The expenses are all paid through the, the town, town killing. Correct. They they don't they have payroll, and they send us a bill for it. No, did, I, I, I'm more okay. pointing towards the fact that. When they use this computer system or whatever at the golf course, if they sell a beer or they sell food and it's eleven dollars, they just hit one button and they're not separating it out. Also, I have cleared that up with them. I told them they had some issues. I worked through every single one of them so that now when they push a beer button, it goes to beer revenue. When they push a food button, it goes to food revenue. If it's on the on the beverage cart. If they hit beer, it goes beer, beverage car, and, and so on. It's not rocket science. It's, it, is, it is proper. Now it's properly interfacing from their club caddy point of sale system into an Excel file, basically, which I enter into our network. Okay, so that, that's been, it, there was some minor issues there, Jim. I, I mentioned it to you in the past. It's been corrected. Okay. So. Cool. But they have, they have their own chart of accounts, and I try to take so they fill out their budget temple with their chart of accounts, and then I try to I, I mirror that to Nimric, and if if they don't if they don't break everything out, even they give you a cost of goods sold pro shop, one number, that's wrong. Mm -hmm. It should and you're and your pro shop sales in one number. No, we sell line, lines of goods and it should be budgeted that way. And that's so the for way the they sold. FY23, I, did a math, I backed into it mathematically based on our history. Yeah. So you backed into it. I did, yeah. So. Because it's the right way to do it. How, in the last two months, how much of your time do you think is still being spent on the golf course? It, it, it will slack off. I'm forcing it to slack off because we're into budget season with the town. No, I, the last two months prior, say July and August. Yeah. I, Are you still I, doing 50% of your time into... Give or take, sure. Yeah. So what do you want to do with this? Make a motion to accept the comparative report of September 2022? Is the... Is the uh, uh, so you have a year-to-date, what's your year-to-date profit number? Don't go surplus. The net says 346.223. Last page, last line. Jack, you didn't, did yeah. you hand me that one? That was the one you were, I gave you first. Okay. That's so good. revenue is up. Golf comparative. 50. That's Town, town. Thank you. Second your motion. Uh, okay. 
please give me a moment. I think this report is missing something. Three, four, six. Okay, so what this report is not reflecting, um, the town in September uh, made payments to the golf course so that in turn the golf course could make their debt payments. Okay, $114,000. It's not included in the, in the 346. Correct, and, and the reason we were doing it, this is the five, the, the, the sixes and the sevens just to talk about golf course performance it's not the total okay it was keeping it was keeping debt payments out of this so we weren't confusing those issues with what the golf course is doing okay operationally that's how it has been done historically but you're showing the thirty six thousand in interest it's one of the last line items in the report right so uh, there was a thirty-six thousand dollar, thirty-six thousand three hundred three dollars fifty-one cents of one point one eight three million. So um, that's an actual expense, is the reason. So that's not from. I so, understand, but uh, right. thirty-six thousand of the one fourteen is that. Is that okay? So you just want to be careful. Okay. You, well, to, the goal. The goal ultimately. Well, yeah. The goal was ultimately just to, for the purposes of talk about golf course performance was okay. keeping all of the debt service out of it. I understand. So that's, this, so that's so, what we wanted so, to do. So to your three, four, six, add back the 36. Okay. And, you know. So the 36 gets added to the 346 without the, the debt service. Well, it's only getting added because last year they didn't We didn't have it. Right. This next year, it will be apples to apples. Correct. Yep. Okay. Motion to accept. <coughs> Second it. All in favor of accepting the golf report, please say aye. 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 Motion to accept the golf course treasurer's report. Second. Is there anything other than what we already talked about in this? Nope. We already brought up the back and forth from the workshop. Mm -hmm. Uh, all in favor of accepting the golf course portion of the treasurer's report, please say aye. Aye. And, uh, yeah, on the town side, um, we're performing as we should be on the, the revenue side is related to mm -hmm. tax collections. Uh, we're about the same amount off, and we'll talk about that more in a minute. Um, but all other items from a revenue perspective uh, option tax is up about 20,000 um, but we are tracking about standard with uh, the process so far um, on the expense side just looking at totals because we're still pretty early in um, we have made one payment that was not reflected when you look at last year's the, at the, on the revenue side, the expense came out of the the state education tax. The, that eight hundred thirty-two thousand has to be transferred over. We've already made the one payment to the Woodstock uh, mm -hmm. schools, and that was not reflected in last year's. Um, so we're we're tracking where we should be tracking, and our expenses are running about the same overall. And if you know if Mark has anything to add, I you know we're he's just back and we're going to be working through the budget issues here shortly. Uh, cash wise, um, if you look at the treasurer's report, I don't know where I put it. Um, we are right now seven point five million dollars in the bank we have three million in restricted funds five point seven owed to the state of Vermont but that's on December 1st um, we still have another five hundred thousand dollars or five million dollars that will be collected in um, November, November um, which is also prior to that payment and about half of that the two and a half million would be applied technically to this school tax item so we're still in about the, the the positive position we should be during the year um, we're 
positive probably about a million and a half at this point um, so we're tracking where we should be um, we're still looking for a better way to eventually report how we're how much of it is state revenue we've gotten versus <laughs> mm -hmm. versus how much of it is actual municipal tax um, so we always have a slightly well, significantly overinflated uh, revenue side on the municipal tax side um, as compared to expenses so um, we always have a big number until we get to some of the, the payments to the state. Um, but uh, overall, we're performing as we, sh we would expect to be performing. And I don't see any major issues at this time. Um, and if you have any questions, I mean, it's, it's um, pretty straightforward. This doesn't have to do with the numbers, but... Is E911, does that mean emergency 911? Yeah, your 911 so, little green signs that are at your yeah. house. Mm -hmm. People can the order e, new the ones e and we for emergency we're money. Yeah. Okay. Well, I didn't know if, because we're waiting for an electric sign no. here. No. Okay. No, we are. We are, but that's it's in the process. So. But it's more than 100 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know that. <laughs> no, I didn't know if for some reason so. there was an electric 911 no. on municipal buildings. No. Okay. So we signed a bunch of warrants, whatever, last Friday or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then, so when I get this here, but when I signed the warrants, there was, it's just going to come back to the telephone or the internet bill again. But if I go to the recreation on this thing here for expenses, there's, 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 there's nothing, there's nothing in here. I mean, there, there's one number <coughs> for utilities. But when I signed a warrant or something, it was like $184 for the month for internet at the swimming pool. And and phone. You think that's okay? No, I don't. $184 for one phone and internet? No. Is that separate from the town hall? Yes, it's its own because it has its own number and its own mm -hmm. setup. And we I mean, don't I have any way to do that. I guess other it's here. like, I mean, because like we paid VTEL $184 for, but I thought we were switching everything over to... That's the one that we don't have the ability to do voice over IP at this time. We're trying to figure out how we're going to do that. But $184 a I month. Agree. And I did I pay $81 so. for internet and phone. Okay. But where else do we have VTEL? Well, in the, in the fire panels still trying to get those out make a motion to accept the charges report and the town report okay second all in favor aye, aye. Uh, I put a just a, a draft of the overall expense budget um, that is just it's the summary as to where we stand right now. Um, the budget this year right now is about one hundred and fifty thousand more than last year. Um, there are still some things to be modified and changed. We're in the process of, of reviewing it and making any adjustments. The three sections that are highlighted are basically numbers we know are going to change we don't have the final numbers for them uh, whether it's benefits appropriations and uh, insurance so we're we will be verifying those as well and then there also will be presentations starting next monday from different departments related to their their budgets so this is just a first draft mm -hmm. of an overall and then we will be drilling down on each of these items Starting on the 24th. Mm -hmm. That's the you included. So today's the 7th. Next week is the 17th? Or today's the 17th. Today we have preliminary operations budget for discussion and preliminary capital budget needs assessment. Well, I have the capital budget numbers in there. I didn't talk about any of the specific projects yet. We'll, we can go over that next week with the special projects. Is that? And we also I moved up the uh, recreation budget to the 24th from the original, so that Sarah will be able to make that presentation next week. 
before she leaves. So you we think, think we're going to come in here next week and do... I don't see us doing all that in one preliminary week. Preliminary well, operational typically. budget for discussion and capital budget needs, and then select board... Rec I mean, I thought we broke up those... I mean, I thought October 24th is pushing it, right. but now we're going to combine the 17th tonight and the 24th together. Well, we the capital the, the capital budget needs, I would probably move to the November 14th meeting because most of the other the ones next week are very small, very quick reviews. Yeah, I'm just saying I don't think it's fair to these other people to come right. in and then we'll do the capital. For, right, we'll do capital on the 14th. that one down okay where we at we've gone through the golf and we've gone through the town financials or the management report well that's where we started with the budget yeah, just now the budget update thing um on the roof or sewer um, allocation, um, we have a request to basically realign one sewer unit for Gore Investments um, from the Anthony Way parcel 21003 to the parcel uh, parcel 22157A, which is the Killington Road 405, um, to align with the change made with the Alpine Pipeline based on usage and need um, for the the apartment that's over there. They're going to need two ERUs according to Alpine Pipeline. So there's been a request for the town to reallocate that one ERU. Where is this? There's a the parcel on the the bend right there on Anthony Way. It's that the goes um, in there. It's the old um, Wise Building. Wise okay. Building. That's where it's going to. <coughs> okay. So oh, they want to move it. They want to move it yeah. from Anthony Way over gotcha. to Instone. Okay. So basically, we don't really, as long as the way that these things got in trouble before was that it wasn't being done through Frank Heal. Right. If Frank Heal signs off, then we sign off. We we sign off, but there is we formally have to say we agree and we allow it to move. So has Frank Heald signed off? Correct. Mm -hmm. no, I, yes, he has. Okay. Yeah, no, he's do made the change. Do we have that letter from him? Or or I believe I do somewhere here. Because <clears throat> this is just a procedure. This is nothing. It's just show us that we have a letter from Frank Heald. And then they're the ones that say that we can't do anything without their blessing. That's the way the contract's written up. Yeah. Prior people, not you guys, but prior people were just moving them all over the place. Where's that one, Frank? I still think it's really unnecessary to have two ERUs at the office where I know it's, it's, it's a showroom that has a, a bathroom for my employees. Mm -hmm. that nobody's there basically just to stop buying I know, I talked to Frank and he, apartment. we are made that arrangement because we match now. So, a ladder, that's so right. I'll, then I'll have to get you the, the actual letter because I couldn't, I don't have it here handy yeah. from Frank. So instead of buying ERUs, I decided since I own them across the street, I'm moving them back to Frank the Frank sent you a letter, correct? Yeah, yeah we signed it all. Uh, well, you need the, the select board's asking for a copy I'm to make a motion letter. to move forward, for the town manager to move forward mm -hmm. without allocating the one ERU from one property to Gore upon presentation yeah, of, the of, letter. of the letter from. As soon as we see the letter. As soon as we yeah. see the letter. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yep. Yeah. So I can sign off on it when I have the letter in hand, or do you want to see it? Just, just send us the letter. Okay. We'll do that. You, we don't have to have a discussion. You just no. send us the, all three of us yep. saying, here's the letter. I'm signing off. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So you can do that tomorrow morning. Yep. So. Sounds and, good. And this allocation will take care of the, um, what I'm missing at the 405, the certificate of occupancy, right? So that will no, take care of it? No, that doesn't. This is just part of it. 
It's just part of it. Okay. Yeah, it's just part of it. Because mm -hmm. you're in site plan, and we're we'll meeting again and going to go into right deliberative session on Thursday. That's a gym question. What's that? Does this leave you with enough ERUs in the property that you're taking? Right it's just vacant land. I'm paying. To, I'm paying. Okay. Them he doesn't need it for. I okay. have them, but I don't use them. Yet. Yeah, there's, there's nothing we, over there. Okay. So this will this will give him another check mark because he's in site plan review for mm -hmm. the change of use of the building from Wise Realty to a retail shop and a one bedroom mm -hmm. on the back side. What's the lot number on it anyway? Do you have it here somewhere? I have the block at the <coughs> on the, in the email. I mean, I don't need it right now. I'm just curious about it. So if you just get that letter, then send it to us tomorrow, and then just sign off on it. Okay. So they have the one at you or you or whatever. It is. And then the zoning, the zoning parcel zoning. twenty-one oh oh three. The zoning the zoning board is meeting up for a deliberative session to finish off hopefully for um, this property and for um, one other property, the um, Bear Force one on Route Four. So, okay. so cool. So, we have an appointment. Yeah. The uh, the. Um, Transportation Alternatives Grant that we're doing that's on Long Route 100 from the the Welcome Center up to the trails um, was originally going to be complete, was going to be managed by in-house uh, planning commissioner and we are reallocating it because he has left. We're mm -hmm. going to be putting it back where we originally approved it for the Rutland Regional Planning Commission and Stephanie Bork to be the representative for this and just need a motion authorizing her to so moved, the, uh, Stephanie yeah. Bork to be appointed as the MDM for the TA grant. Okay. In favor of that? Aye. Aye. And one last little note is the two cruisers are here. They came last Thursday. Did we order the third one? The third one is, is ordered, and I'm just doing the finance paperwork right now. I got that Friday. And has the third officer started? The third officer started last week and was here. He's he's working today, and okay, we're in process. And he's using the remaining 2016 cruiser for the time being. Okay, all right. So that's where we are with that. Okay. That's so for people that are well, we're up to citizen input. For people that are zoomed in or people here, if there's anything we didn't cover that you want to bring up. Uh, could you indicate at this time? Obviously, you guys can just raise yeah, your hand. I have one. I have one question. Okay. I would like to ask you guys if you had a, if you had a conversation um, about um, my request to this section of uh, Killington Road, basically where my office is located. Yeah. Um, can we have the same setbacks as the rest of the Killington Road, as a business zoning, commercial zoning, com business commercial? Because uh, Killington Road. I think that was your question, I don't because know. the commercial, the business, and everything else is the same. Your your question was, you wanted to be the same as a PUD. So, because if you go into the the dimensions, I think that whole road is 15 feet. At this time, yes. After the change, the select board approved so uh, board last one. So it's 15 feet. I just want to base all the setbacks from the side, from the front, uh, all the to same. be consistent. Okay, so it will be consistent. They're 15 feet, the entire length of Kellington Road as it stands right now. Is the front. Okay. And the I think there were still 25s on yeah, the sides. The sides, I believe, are 25. Because there was also something something different in PUD, the numbers. That's what I just said. Yeah. You yeah. said, you know, the PUD, I think, is still different. Yeah. PUD is different because you have greater density. Correct. Mm -hmm. That's why. Because of greater density, you want to. But have we haven't had that setbacks. conversation because this meeting started off that when we started going into here, uh, I couldn't because at some point we're going to go through all three. There's three different things. So my my suggestion is because like I remember uh, Joanne Weiss was telling me before Killington Road was like business commercial and um, uh, her husband, it took him some time to convince the town to basically grant the business zoning whatever. The business zoning is, is is right now with the setbacks and everything else. So now with Killington Grow and then the Killington Road, the whole master plan, um, 
I'm looking at that uh, section and it seems like it's just a little bit confusing. It would be easier to eliminate the business zoning and just make it commercial from the beginning of Killington Road all the way up. You're asking for something different now. On one side, you're asking for the setbacks, but then you're asking for the same zoning capability, which up above is nightclubs and some other things, and down by you is not. So there are, there's more single family homes in your area you're not going to get your area zoned for a nightclub. Oh, we, well, I don't need it. So we can <laughs> exclude that. But that's what you just asked for. <laughs> no, the, it has everything else in it. You, you asked for the same to be zoned as the same as up above. And there's a the difference. Yeah, but there, up above has when, when I printed out the commercial zoning, business zoning, there, there are a few items missing in the business. And uh, one of them is, uh, 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 let's say, Nightclub. club. But Without it, there are still other other things, other allowances, other things can be done there. We have it. It's not that one. I'll go to my screenshots, see if I can. So, two fifteen. What? Two one five. Section two one five. Front page. Eleven. So, commercial district compared to business district, right? So, in commercial business, the setbacks, the front we changed to fifteen, right? Even in a PUD, we change it to 15, right. okay? The side setback is 15, I'm on page 29. Yep, and, I got it. And the side setback in a PUD is 15. The rear setback is 25, and in a PUD, it's 25. The maximum coverage is 70% in, in the commercial and then the district and it goes the same way down down the down the road all the 10,000 square foot minimum lots what you can use permitted uses whether or not in a PUD one and two families in a business district there's hotel lodging there isn't com there isn't commercial also hotel and restaurant uh, so like out of service, for example, <coughs> there is a commercial district, What's but that? not in business. What's that? Um, the uh, basically dra nice. gravel pit, out of service station, light industry. So I just I'm just looking at that. So still, are you in the business district? Mm -hmm. So you're saying, what would you like added into the business district? It just seems to me that we should eliminate business district and make it the same commercial as the rest of the Killington Road. So in the biz in the commercial disnicks, not in a PUD extraction of earth. I don't see anything over at. I'm trying to in in a business district there is daycare. There's daycare in commercial. Yeah, because in commercial district it shows here in PUD, auto service station, light industry, fast food restaurant, and then if I go to back to business. Yeah, and we're not putting gas stations down at the bottom of the road. It's, it's, it's just, seems to be that Killing, when you look at Killington and all those zoning uh, zones, that business here, that business zoning, yeah. compared to this zoning business, uh, uh, commercial business, because you know, Innsbruck is in different zoning, and then commercial there. Killington is one road, so I'm basically... But the, but the Planning Commission made certain areas, so if we put... If you think we're going to put, like, gas stations allowed now down in the lower part of the Killington Road, there was a certain section that was allowed to have gas stations, and I believe it's really from the... 
mountain merchants or whether there's one there and then there's I think the Dean Hill, Hobro I think or whatever. Commercials like Dean Hill Road up, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. The commercial starts right around there. I have to look at the map now, I forget. But what I'm getting at is is that we're not gonna I, if I sit here and start saying there's yeah, gas stations No, it it's just on one side, I can kind of see your point, but at the same time, Killington Road is Killington Road. What's the point of here or there? It's what would you like? Road. So we, let me ask you this road. question. What would you like to see included? I would like to have kind of possibilities. Same what as possibilities commercial. do not exist for you right now, short of, and I have nothing to do with me, nightclubs, okay? What exists that you want there that you can't put there? What can't you put in there do you want to do? It's just... I would like those two things be like uh, identical. Basically, that's what I what I'm. I don't think you're going to find the appetite for that, and I'll be honest with you, because a lot of people there are residential people down here, and you think that you're going to put a nightclub down in this section, or okay. a gas station, or a gas station isn't fair to them. What about the out, 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 outdoor repair shop? An outdoor. You're not going to. You're not going to see it. You're not going to see. If if we were here to put an outdoor repair shop in the lower section bye bye because you know we, we, we put it in <laughs> with, with what is an outdoor lot? repair shop yeah we, it's just like so even like i have my uh, i bought multiple lots i have the acreage i can do the what i'm asking I, that's not what i'm asking yeah. what is an outdoor repair shop for what no, it's just basically I was just reading uh, what's what's in commercial, what's what's not. What in is it? I'm asking. What is an outdoor repair shop to you? I just don't know. I'm asking. Outdoor body shop. I think that's, that, that, that. we have I, the appetite. It's just for, options. So the like, appetite for that, and right now to have that on the lower part of Killington Road, I would think would be pretty tough. Okay. And we, and remember that any change to the map, which that is, has to go to the voters. That cannot be changed by okay. the board. Uh, so even with the land that I bought, uh, the, with the Killington Grove, and I mean, you guys bought this lot and you decided to put the fire station right in that section. It's just there was an indication that the town wants to move and make Killington Road, Killington well, Road. The, the, so town, all the, the, the town, it's per, this area is permitted for this. Right. We didn't buy a piece of land and then say, Change Let's change the see, like, rules. F for me, it's Killington Road, Killington Road, and then it seems like business, th that little section seems like you guys are treated in slightly differently because like... Uh, I would uh, argue the other, well, the opposite is true because to be perfectly honest with you, if this was 40 years ago and and the, the gas station that used to be a gas station and repair shop and the other gas station, if they weren't there, I think you'd see this zoning almost all the way up with the exception of nightclubs. You would, I don't think anybody wanted them up there. They were already there and they weren't going to create a nonconformity. Because we are growing. You know, it's just I want to have options where I decide to sell the, those lots. And uh, I, 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 guess, I guess the problem that I see, Andrew, is, is that you bought a piece of land and it has zoning for certain things in it. So if you want to sell it to somebody else, the potential buyer has to stick to, we can't keep on changing because someone, and, and I'm gonna just correct something here. Charlie Wise was not a lot alive, okay, when this property was already zoned something else. Right. Okay, and the only reason why it was rechanged was because someone said they had a person that wanted to buy it as a restaurant not a nightclub and they had a potential sale for a restaurant and for some reason it got changed okay um we can't continue just to change because somebody wants to sell their piece of property and it's not zoned for an auto shop because it almost sounds like you have a person that wants to buy a piece of land from you right now, but they want to put an auto shop on it. Um, that's what it sounds like. Maybe it's just you just want to be able to advertise it as to put an auto shop, but we already have enough problems with an auto shop up the block that it you took me a year now to at least get it looking partially decent, okay? We're not going to get another auto shop 
on the killing. I'm just looking at the option because, like, I will, I can build with the new changes, quarter acre. I mean, I can build lots of houses there. I can build uh, condominiums like I'm doing right now. So for me, it was just one of those things that I mentioned as, as an as example, reading through this, saying out of outer shop I, or something I, I, else. I think, I think, I think what's allowed in your district will 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 do well for you. You know. Um, what people have, I, I hope that they understand is, is that, you know, it's, there's going to be, just because somebody owns 45 acres of land, say me, okay, doesn't mean that I can, I've got to go through the <coughs> river corridor, I've got to go through, uh, i, I got to go through so many different places, and, and, and my 45 acres get shrunk, 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 and then i got to prove I have water. So right now, unless this water line comes down here, okay, um, I don't know if there's enough water. On, th there's a lot of things. Yeah, I, I, I think what really started me thinking about all of this is just uh, uh, the letter from my neighbor that said I cannot, she doesn't like looking at my equipment. Well, your equipment shouldn't be on that property because it's not allowed in the But that's, uh, you start driving uh, Killington Road. Chris has lots of equipment. Steve Durke has lots of equipment. Uh, Moguls has lots of equipment. So my biggest thing is, that's the reason why I started looking into this, basically saying Killington Road is Killington Road. Why I cannot have, and I looked in the, in the, in the, in the, in the laws, it doesn't say that specifically commercial allows everybody to keep their equipment there, and now they... So they're gonna say, "Oh, you cannot have it at this section of the road." It just, no, it's right? it, it just makes no happen. sense because, like, the other people have, and, I, and why I can't have it. I you're just not want allowed you guys to have because it says you're not allowed to have a business there. It doesn't say that you can't have an excavator on your house property, okay? But it says you can't have a business. There's certain businesses in certain areas, like you can't have a gas station down here. Yeah. But my business is to, we sell hot tubs. And, and we try to explain that I need a loader there anyway, not only to push snow, but to unload. But I also, my truck, tri axle in the trailer, we deliver hot tubs like that. So all of this equipment is part of the business in Stone Spas because we deliver them. Right. So and you're in the middle of a site plan review, okay. and now you want to take it out into the open. And I'm not going to take the hook. Okay, that, I, that was my explanation why I was thinking about why business because, zoning. Because why business zoning should be no, no, eliminated. Andrew, should Andrew, be your, your, original e your original text to me that I said, please send to me what you wanted, only talked about the setbacks. And tonight we've gone from setbacks to I want to be able to put an auto shop on a piece of property to... I want to be able to have excavating equipment on a property that's not currently allowed in the area. That's all. I didn't set the zones back then. I wasn't around when it was done. I just have to follow the rules, okay? But there are certain things in here that says no extraction, right? It, and not in the PUD extractions of earth materials, which is meaning like a gravel pit. You know, that's what that is. So, so. But, but, but also, wording doesn't say uh, specifically not allowed to keep equipment, and that's another I think key word uh, in uh, in our laws right now. Well, I would argue that the that the one difference I see is they in the commercial district it allows light industry, which would be like a small excavating company, and also. Um, an auto service station. So those two big differences so with not, what so the right things are. So service is not allowed down below for right. certain reasons. I know Killington specifically, the resort itself, it's, it says in their zone that they're allowed to have all their, their equipment. That's a separate district. That's the yeah, ski village. Yeah, yeah. That was designed for whatever they're doing in their process. But you don't want all things allowed in all zones just because that's where you end up with no, that then there's no reason to have zoning you know what I mean the whole purpose of zoning is to to confine yeah, certain types of development to certain areas confusing because Killington Road is Killington Road and then suddenly you have uh, you know sections basically that with the town growing the, the way the way everything was growing businesses grow towns grow suddenly this business zoning gets eliminated it becomes commercial and that's how the town I proceeds think the I think the zoning but the board, zoning board has looked at this. 
the commission looked at it, okay, and I think they've made some pretty strong decisions about setbacks and showing some progression with that, okay? But again, you, in this particular district down here, you have a lot of single family and duplexes. And just to make a change because you want to have your equipment or you want something is not fair to that entire district. You have to think of the entire district. I that's, have to that's, be, yeah. You <laughs> bought the property knowing what it was, mm -hmm. okay? You knew what the limitations were. You've actually got a better deal now because you have lesser setbacks, yeah. okay? So it's showing some progressions. But regardless, that's how you bought the property. You accepted that. And so, but you, as these people that live in this district also, single family homes or duplexes, it is not fair to all of a sudden allow industry to go in right next to them. That's not what they signed up for. You like, signed up to buy a piece of property that yeah, had limitations. But, but at the same time, that's why every other neighbor I work for, and uh, when I talk about, uh, for example, Steve who owns 30 acres, that can be developed too. So like uh, when, where I live right now, throw away at Killington Road. I already have almost every other person. All I have to do is just like, will you support me on this? And then uh, if, if so that comes up to like for a vote or something, I think maybe we should uh, uh, consider it. Because we then if I get enough planet. people <laughs> to say, sure, let's change it, let's make it, uh, let's make it. That would be something you bring to the planning. It's the thing we decide. All right. The planning is the one that presents things to us, okay. as you saw tonight, or did see. I just don't know how this blew up from make sure that the setbacks are the same up and down the road. And they are. That was the tag. Okay. Let's so, move on. Yep. Yeah. Uh, do you guys have executive session? I do not. Yes. Huh? Yeah, we do. yeah, I got Personnel. a couple of things. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Executive we'll session. Go in. Oh, David before we go, one the, one of the I yeah. sent out an email. I don't I don't have your I don't have your email. I'll give it to you before you leave. Okay. I sent out an email that I would like us as a board to visit um, all the different um, departments within the town and tour it with the employees at some point, mm -hmm. especially as we're going through, like, walk through the town garage with them, see what they have going on, walk mm -hmm. through, you know, public safety, library, golf course. You're very knowledgeable about the golf course. Mm -hmm. I'm not. <laughs> I know the woods because that's where I put most of the balls, okay? So it's just like, to me, I think it would be very interesting to kind of yeah. just go through if we could. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, so and I was I working on, after his email, working on getting it scheduled so we could do like a, a special meeting before we have, like each time before we go into <laughs> one of their departments, we will get to visit the site. Yep, that'd be great. Thank you. That's all I have. I meant to bring that up earlier. So I make a motion to go into executive session for legal and personnel, I believe, right? Personnel, yeah. Okay. 823. Okay. 